Hello everyone, this is Mr. Vanderpool. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the media. So, let's start off by talking about the functions of the media. The media is entertainment. It also will provide the news. Um, it has an important, important function called agenda setting. And this is the ability of the media to draw public attention to certain issues and to ignore other issues. I'm sure at this point in time, at the point of time that you're listening to this, you can think about those major issues um, that the media is focusing in on right now. Um, the media is also a political forum. It is a place to make announcements or to advertise government officials and government policies. So let's look at the structure of the media. Uh, print media is kind of on its way out here. Um, it's uh, newspapers, magazines, um, it's the oldest, it's the most steadily replaced. So example, uh, examples of newspapers, of course, would be like the New York Times, the LA Times, the Wall Street Journal. Examples of magazines would be Time Magazine, The Economist, etc. Um, print media, like was previously said, is kind of on its way out at the point that I'm making this video. Um, you also have electronic media, you have radio, um, you have TV. Um, TV is now uh, the primary source of news. You have, of course, 24-hour news channels like CNN and Fox News. Um, radio is generally a uh, more conservative medium. And then you have the Internet. The Internet provides instant information at any time. Um, it's replacing print and electronic media. You're definitely seeing outlets uh, that used to solely do print media now going into, into um, internet uh, media. Um, so, for example, we talked about the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Well, they, of course, have online stories now as well as um, print stories. Um, you also have social media that provides um, a lot of news, um, so it can be considered a part of the media. You've got blogs, you've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, politicians um, use those all the time to advocate their positions. Um, it's important to understand that the media, um, some sort in the, in the media, some sources are a little bit more liberal, and other, others are a little bit more conservative. So examples of some liberal sources might be MSNBC, The Washington Post, The New York Times. Other uh, other sources that might be more conservative uh, would be like Fox News, The Wall Street Journal. It's important to keep that um, inherent bias in mind as you take a look at these various media sources. Now, let's talk a little bit about media con uh, conglomerates. Who owns inf uh, who owns the news? Who owns information? Um, there are a few major companies um, that own our major information sources. Uh, Viacom, Disney, Time Warner, etc. And of course you also have government um, entities that do this as well like PBS and NPR. They convey information as well outside of the control of the media conglomerates. Uh, so, got it. Uh, owns USA Today. Controls the biggest circulation um, in the nation. Owns 100 additional papers. So they've got a lot of power when it comes to the uh, dissemination of information. Rupert Murdoch owns 124 radio stations, the New York Post, Weekly Standard, Fox News. Uh, case study here, Viacom, at the time of this uh, PowerPoint here, as you can see, owns a lot of different TV stations and information sources. So uh, liberals generally like to point out that corporations 
um, own a sizable percentage of the media and so therefore corporate interests are promoted more widely than other interests. And of course there are some exceptions to that like I mentioned previously you've got PBS, NPR, those quasi governmental entities that will also disseminate information and would be considered parts of the media. So let's take a look at government regulation of the media here. Um, you've got the First Amendment which of course gives us the freedom of the press. Uh, so the government can't place prior restraint on the news. It can't censor news before it is released. Uh, but however, the press is not entirely free. Because it is regulated by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. Okay, it helps control the media. Uh, you can't operate a radio, uh, radio TV station without its license. Who is it? There's five members, no more than three from the same political party. Uh, they're nominated by the president for five years. So they make sure that you don't have F-bombs uh, on TV or too many F-bombs on TV. There's not ward ground mal malfunctions, etc. Um, so they uphold the standards of decency of the time, particularly on television. So some people that have had problems with the FCC in the past would be like Howard Stern, Eminem, etc. Now, the media definitely has an impact on politics. Um, the media creates a soundbite culture. Uh, sound bites are basically uh, segments of information that are a few seconds long. Um, so stories and political messages are shortened uh, in order to fit them in. Uh, to these sound bites, and this makes uh, these stories and political messages seem less complex than in reality. So a lot of information is lost in this sound bite culture that we currently have in the media. Now let's look at the media and political campaigns. How does the media affect political, political campaign, campaigns? They do it in a myriad of ways here. Uh, you've got advertising. Uh, political candidates advertise all the time on TV. Very expensive, uh, but it's a way to reach a lot of voters. Um, but if you're going to uh, uh, do campaign advertisements on TV, candidates definitely need to raise a lot of money because TV is very expensive. Um, one way they try and cut down on, uh, candidates will try and cut down on these, on these advertising costs is they'll try and get free coverage. So they will attempt to create uh, events where the media will attend them and cover them for free. And related to this is the idea of the spin doctor uh, who is one who tries to influence journalists with interpretations of events that are favorable to the candidate. And of course, a good example of this might be presidential debates. You have these events that the, that the uh, newspapers the media will cover that are essentially free to the candidate. They are a way for um, candidates that don't have many resources to convey their message. Now, uh, let's look at the media and government officials. Now, there's an entire set of journalists from various organizations that all they do is they cover the president, and that is called the White, uh, the White House Press Corps. So these, once again, are the journalists whose sole job is to follow the president. 
The president also hires someone whose entire job is to uh, deal with the media, uh, and that is the White House press secretary. Um, this person is responsible for addressing the press daily, answering questions for the president. It can be a very stressful job. All right, let's look at the assessment. So we're going to compare and contrast the different types of media that exist. Which type do you get most of your information from? And we're going to describe the effect the media has on campaigns and politics. All right, you can pause if you need to, and then we'll move on to the summary in a paragraph. Describe what you've learned today. All righty. You guys have a good one.